In the previous video, we discussed about the diphtheria toxin and its structure. If you want to watch that video first, the link is in the description. Now in this video, we will be discussing about the action mechanism of diphtheria toxin. While we will see how toxin binds and enters the host cell and what are the targets of toxin within the host cell. First of all, we see the diphtheria toxin is secreted by Cornibacterium diphtheriae. The ligand in this pathway is diphtheria AB toxin and its receptor is HBEGF receptor. The mode of entry is receptor mediated endocytosis and the target of toxin within the host cell is eukaryotic elongation factor 2. Now let's start the action mechanism pathway. Here in this diagram we have the host cell having HBEGF precursor receptor on the plasma membrane and we also have DTRAP27 molecule on the membrane. So when we have the presence of ligand molecule outside of the cell in the form of diphtheria toxin as shown in the diagram, the DTRAP27 interacts with the HBEGF precursor and we get the active HBEGF receptor as shown in the animation. So now we have the active HBEGF receptor ready to take in the ligand. Now after that we have the diphtheria toxin outside of the cell that is secreted by Cornibacterium diphtheriae. Here we see the toxin has two subunits, A subunit and B subunit. The A subunit has got C domain and B subunit has got T domain and R domain. Now moving forward, the diphtheria toxin comes in and binds with the HBEGF receptor as shown in the animation. And it is the R domain of toxin that binds with the receptor. And the other two domains of toxin are T domain shown in the green color and C domain shown in the red color. Now getting to the action mechanism. So after binding of toxin with the receptor, the plasma membrane invagination takes place as shown in the diagram. And then calethrin molecule surrounds the invaginated plasma membrane and drives the calethrin mediated endocytosis, which is followed by endosome formation as shown in the animation. And within the endosome, we can see we have the furin enzyme also. After that, the acidification takes place where we see the V ATPase pumps in protons into the endosome, thereby lowering the pH of endosome. So upon acidification, the transmembrane domain of toxin, that's T domain, undergoes a spontaneous dynamic reorganization and inserts into the membrane forming a pore. And then the furin cleaves the C domain of toxin within the endosome, that's shown in the red color. And this C domain exits the endosome through the pore which has been formed by the T domain. And this delivery of C domain into the cytosol is also mediated by other proteins like COP1 complex and HSP90 molecules. And within the cytosol, the catalytic C domain of diphtheria toxin gets active. And then this active C domain mediates an enzymatic reaction with elongation factor 2 in presence of NAD. The reaction is called ADB ribosylation. Here in this reaction, we get the transfer of ADP ribose from NAD to diphthamide residue of elongation factor 2. And by this way, elongation factor 2 is rendered useless. So elongation factor 2 no longer works in the protein synthesis process, thereby halting the protein synthesis. And by this way, the diphtheria toxin inhibits the protein synthesis in the host cell. So this is all about the action mechanism of diphtheria toxin. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.